Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to show you how to add GPS timing functionality to David Watts's binary crap clock kit, which you may have seen me build in last night's video. It's a really simple and really cheap mod to do, and hopefully you might find it useful or indeed interesting. But before I get on to that, I'm going to take you through how you actually tell the time on this clock, because my explanation in last night's video was rubbish, quite frankly. Um, but in essence, it's actually quite simple to do. What we're going to do is split this area uh, or this array I should say of 20 LEDs into three areas now being a clock we're going to name those areas hours minutes and seconds so each area um, has two columns of LEDs and the total of those LEDs in each area are as follows in the hours area we have uh, six LEDs and both the minutes and seconds areas we have a total of seven LEDs in each on the silver screen here, you will see 1, 2, 4 and 8, and that references the rows across the array. On the right-hand column in each area, that is our single digits, and on the left-hand column in each area, that is our tens, okay? So, right-hand, uh, we've got 1, 2, 4 and 8, so that is our single digits, and a combination of those two give you the total for the, the second digit, if that makes sense. So, 2 and 4 together gives you 6. We've got nothing on the tens we have now because this one's now illuminated and it's counting up on the right hand side. So we've got 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then that one will come on for 20. Okay, so let's do it on something that's not moving just now. We can see on the right hand area, right hand column of the minute section, we have no LEDs illuminated, so that's zero. And we have the 10, so the number one on the left hand column, which is a 10. We can see that is 10. On the hours, we've got the 20 LED illuminated and the 2. So I can tell from this just now that it is 22, 10, and um, so 1 and 4 is 5, 50, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That one comes on, it goes off, and then this one comes on to tell us it's now 22, 11. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does, um, or it's at least better than it was last night. So, the way this uh, clock is counting is because uh, the way Dave designed it, it's got a crystal, it's got circuitry in there that is uh, basically generating a one hertz, uh, you know, signal, which is cycling the LEDs once every second. Now, I'm not sure, maybe David did go to a super top quality supplier for all his components, but of course, with if he didn't i should say um cheaper components might not be high quality the tolerances might be slightly off and ultimately a clock like this is basically going to drift over time but there's a way we can overcome this and david has built it into the design what we can do is uh, input uh, a gps derived uh, one hertz pulse which will cycle the the leds using the gps constellation of satellites how are we going to do that or what are we going to use to do that or get that functionality? We're going to use one of these and this is a, a Ublox Neo 6M. Um, and what it is, is a, a super cheap GPS module which you may have seen in AliExpress or Amazon. Of course, I'll pop a link to one of these down below for you to have a look at if you wish. Um, and yeah, they're, they're super cheap. They tend to use um, salvaged components. So... When we send our electronic waste or e-waste, whatever you want to call it, overseas, um, the Chinese or whoever it may be, will actually strip things down to their components and, and repurpose and reuse and resell what they can, which is obviously fantastic because it means stuff's not going into landfill and we you know, benefit from cheap components for our, for our projects. And yeah, this is an example of that. So this, as you can probably see, if I can get it to focus... It's got a rather grubby, you know, label on it. It's a bit scratched up on the side. But it's on a brand spanking new, super shiny PCB. Um, and, you know, it does what it does. It's it's going to give us, you know, GPS functionality for around £5. If you go to AliExpress, you probably get it even cheaper. If we look at the pinout on this, on the little header, we'll take you through what you can see here. We've got um, VCC and ground, which is a power in, obviously. We've got transmit and receive, which is our GPS data. But this top pin here, PPS, stands for pulse per second. And that is a GPS-derived signal, which, funnily enough, it pulses once every second. And it's going to be super easy 
to uh, get that feeding into to David's clock. All we're going to do is power the GPS in the first instance and uh, actually get a locked GPS signal. So I'm just using these uh, DuPont leads. Um, so I'll put into VCC and ground. So our ground is the purple wire and VCC is blue. So I'll just pop these into essentially in parallel with the my power supply. The good thing about this module is it does accept uh, between five and three, uh, sorry, between three and five volts. A lot of these modules are either one or the other. Now, if you can see on there, um, currently there is a red LED uh, and it's on solid, which means that the board is actually searching for a signal. So what we'll do is we'll leave that for just a moment. Um, it does have a small lithium uh, battery on board and what that does is essentially remembers the position you may have heard of cold and warm start for gps or hot start and um, cold start is the f essentially the first time that a, a gps receiver is powered on it doesn't know where it is okay so it will take time for the gps to actually locate the satellites and then triangulate and, and find out where it is once you've had it connected for a little while um, and it's got that locked on signal as it has done now the the battery backup will essentially remember where it is or have a good idea where it is so the next time you power it on it will almost come on within probably about 30 seconds and you can actually look in the data sheet and it will tell you the hot and cold start times um, if you're interested clearly on a project like this you know we don't care if it comes on instantaneously or we have to wait for a minute um, you know, obviously the quicker is the better, but of course cheapest is the better when, when it comes to our hobbyist type stuff, isn't it? But as you can see now, the uh, the module is actually flashing. And funnily enough, it is flashing once every second. And that's indicating that we do have that pulse per second uh, signal being received and being um, sent out of that U-Blocks chipset. To interface it with uh, David's board you'd think would be quite complex it's actually not at all if i just flip over the clock you may recall uh seeing me messing about with this and we were manually flicking through using the the uh the switches on the front here it's currently set to clock and one hertz okay so that's the board's onboard circuitry generating that one hertz pulse if we move the jumper across to manual that's when if we press the button we can cycle through and what we're going to have to do is get it to the point that we're, we're almost at the time, or we're slightly ahead of the actual time it is. The trouble, not the trouble with this is, although it's a GPS receiver and GPS is, is super accurate, it's generally a system or a piece of code pulling out the actual uh, timestamp from the GPS uh, data sentence, which you know has course, speed, height, or altitude, I should say all that good sort of stuff. We, we don't have this here, so what we have to do is get the clock in a such a state that it is ahead of where we want the time to start, if that makes sense. So say it's um, 10.25 or something just now, and we want to set it off on GPS at 10.30, what you do is you get the clock set up just ahead of time, ready to connect to GPS, and as soon as it hits the time, so use a, a known, you know, a known time on your phone, something that's been synced to the network or something like that. And as soon as it gets to the time that you've already set on your clock, connect the GPS. Hopefully that makes sense. And then the GPS will start taking over the the the, the, the timing or the, the control of the board and, and getting that time to, to stay accurate. Right, slightly rambling. What we're going to do now is on our... Uh, GPS module. We remember the top pin was our pulse per second. We're just going to put a little dew point connector on there. Okay. We are going to remove the header in total from the clock. And as you can see, it isn't cycling at all. And all we're going to do, we're going to say that we've set up the clock, you know, give yourself a countdown, and then we're going to connect the um, connect to GPS. So we'll say that we've got that already. Three, two, one. And there we go. As you can see, probably from the, the video, every time the LED on the 
GPS flashes, it cycles the LEDs on the crap clock kit. So there we have it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too rambly. Um, but that's how you add GPS functionality to David's crap clock. Uh, quite a, you know, a really simple kit, a really simple piece of equipment. But ultimately, David's, you know, $10 kit is now, you know, is now been ha having its timing disciplined by a $12 billion constellation of US government satellites. How mental is that? Anyway, guys and girls, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this enjoyable or helpful. If you're going to do this on your own kit, please pop a comment down below. Uh, and I'd be interested to see if you do a video on it as well and see how you get on. Um, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, thought it was a little rubbish, give me a thumbs down. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my flat head just down about here. And until next time, take care of yourselves. And as always, all the best.